I, I just wanted to share with you too, I forgot about this. Shelly and I were driving down the, and we saw a church marquee, you know, and they had, you know how it says here in love, we're just gonna leave these here for right now. Yep. And um, maybe when we start praying, you can, you can take them away, but right now that's fine. We saw a church marquee. You know how it says here that love believes the best of every person? Well, on this church marquee here in town, it has believe the best, forgive the rest. That settles it right there. Praise God. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to put up our spiritual antennas tonight because... Um, we're here for God to use us. You're here for how God to use you. And uh, I just want to uh, talk about why we're here. And um, 1995, ah, we're doing pretty well on time. 1995, I was in a meeting at Brother Hagen's in Tulsa, and they call it when the spirit gets to moving. You can still see it. And, or the night of the 84 broken chairs. 84 wooden chairs were broken. People jumping, dancing, hilarious. And uh, I was on the platform. Uh, behind Brother Hagen were a lot of seats because at that time, uh, Raymond was just packed out the auditorium. So they had to put extra chairs up here for people to sit in. Ministers sat up there. And I was sitting up there, and uh, you don't see me because I fell down to the floor, and I'm lying there on the ground with my hands straight up, and I'm in a trance. My great-grandparents were pre-Azusa Street Pentecostals. When Brother Parham and his group sought God, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and in 1901, midnight, 1901, when the calendar changed, the first lady spoke with tongues. Now, it had been... It had been not to the front. God had to restore it. It was something the canker worm had eaten. But he restored it. And those people from Baxter Springs and from that part, Galena, when they came down, they came through Oklahoma on their way to Houston. And it was in Houston that Brother Seymour, the one-eyed black preacher, heard the message. And then he took it to California, and it became Azusa Street. But my grandparents... When it came through Coweta, Oklahoma, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, they received the baptism with the Holy Spirit. My great-grandparents, bless the Lord. So they had, at those times, people, my great-grandfather, he had been, well, I, I can't tell you all my whole life story, but <laughs> here's a little bit of it. Uh, my mother said of them, they, they're, they're their own grandpa, but... Uh, <laughs> They lived in Missouri. My great-great-grandmother uh, was a widow, and she had several children. And across the street from them came some noisy, they, well, across the street, it was farms. The farmhouses were up on the road, and there was farm back here and farm back here. And some um, uh, French Canadians moved across this, the way by the name of Picard. Only when they got to Missouri, they called him Picard. And... Uh, <laughs> So my grandmother was named Pipes. She lives here with her children. Her husband's dead. She has these children. And here comes this noisy bunch with a bunch of boys, and they make music all the time. And uh, so my, uh, my grandmother, my, my great-grandmother marries the youngest Pickard boy, and her mother marries the oldest. <laughs> your sisters are your nieces. It's... it's and they all had children. Mother could never straighten out the Missouri relatives. <laughs> she couldn't get them straight in her mind, what they were, who they were. But it, my youngest, my, my grandmother, my great-grandmother, we have the Pickard Place out there. You know, one of our cabins is named for them. And um, she married this young Pickard boy, and Picard, or Pickard by then. And... Uh, and uh, he was just joyful, made music all the time. And she found out that one reason why he hit the jug, he hit the juice. <laughs> and uh, so he wanted to go to Oklahoma because you could get land there, you know, in the land rush. And she wanted to go because she heard there was no liquor in Oklahoma. 
But the first thing when she, it was Indian Territory then, not Oklahoma yet, Indian Territory. So the first thing she saw when they crossed over the border, her heart fell, was a drunk Indian. <laughs> so eventually they moved near Coweta, Oklahoma, and farmed there. And uh, he was a happy drunk. He wasn't a mean drunk. He was real happy, made lots of noise, lots of singing. And he would go into town and... Uh, he, he would go and he, they, his cotton was king. He'd sell a load of cotton and then he'd uh, get drunk on the proceeds and the horses knew the way home. And uh, one night she heard him coming and she heard, the, he's singing the top of his voice. And she said, girls, uh, Papa is drunker than ever. Go open the gate. They opened the gate and he was drunk all right, but it was on the new wine. It's a long story, and I'm not going to go into the details of it. It's in our book, Road to Prayer Mountain. But he had run into those folks from the Parham meeting. He'd run into them, and he'd been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Right away, the town fathers wanted to put him to a mental institution. That's another long story. In those days, they threw tomatoes. They threw, they threw rotten eggs. They did everything. And they tried. They visit my grandmother. He received first. They visit my grandmother, great-grandmother, and they said, we're going to help you put him away in Vanita. And, uh, but anyway, she received, and their farm had a big canyon. And the Pentecostals would come out there and pray. And they'd walk up and down that canyon and get happy. They could get happy, loud happy, or they could get a burden, and nobody would throw things at them. So it was a place of prayer. Prayer, noon, night, morning, all the time. Prayer, prayer, prayer. My dad's father died when he was two years old, and he just said they prayed all the time. And so daddy learned to do that and learned to pray like that. But when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, daddy had kind of backslidden and became a Baptist. <laughs> and uh, so I didn't know all these stories until I got, born, got filled with the Holy Spirit. In fact, I would said... Anyway, that's a long story. I'm not going to. I can't tell you all that. Billy Brim, don't tell your whole life story. But I thought, and I heard about them and heard their stories. People started telling me their stories. Um, I felt like that God, God said to me, that's the court of your inheritance. That prayer, the kind of prayer they had, that's the court of your inheritance. So I thought I'm supposed to get that land. They wouldn't sell it to me. It's a long story there too. But that night, 1995, out in a trance at Brother Hagin's meeting, arms up. I see inside of a cabin, log cabin. And the Lord said, Tulsa's not the place. I want you to go to Branson. He talked to me about when Corey Tinboom threw over this place and how she said it's going to be a catalyst for God in the end time move. He said, I want you to go there and I want you to establish a place of prayer. So we went out into the boonies. We thought the far boonies uh, we went a lot of places looking around. I, I liked other places better, but no, he picked that one. <laughs> and he said, I want you to establish a place of prayer for two reasons. I want you to pray in the plans of God and stop the strategies of the enemy. I want you to have two kinds of prayer. Corporate prayer, we have a chapel, and then individual places for prayer, the cabins. So, that's what we did. Now, I did not really think that I was a good enough prayer. I mean, I walked with prayers that could, oh my goodness, if you prayed with Brother Philip Alverson, you got lifted up. You got out in another realm. I can't even explain to you what it was like praying with him. But God gathered all these people around me, Brother Halverson, Sister Halverson, uh, John G. Lake's daughter, and son-in-law, he brought them to me, Rachel Tifatiller. I had an assistant editor at Brother Hagen's, and she said, you collect these people like some people collect teacups. <laughs> and they were all around me and all the time. And long, long story. Everything I have is a long story. <laughs> but Brother Halverson, the night before he died and the night my sister had just moved to heaven, he called me and talked to me for an hour and a half. Talked to Lynn that day, too. He went from their platform, Mac and Lynn's platform. He just got so far over in the spirit, he couldn't get back. But anyway, he said to me, that night, never forget your number one call is to help the prayers. 
I didn't see how that could be. How to? I mean, they're better prayers than I am. But he has anointed us. And he has given us that place. And that place where we didn't think we could, you know, weigh in the boonies. Now we are reaching all around the world from that place. But this is it. You're it. He said, as nations raise up an air force, I'm raising up a prayer force to pray in the plans of God and to stop the strategies of the devil. You're it. And that's why we dedicated ourselves a, a moment ago. Now, 2008, remember that was the year just before the Obama election, and it was June 29th, and we were out at Prayer Mountain praying on a Sunday afternoon, just about 40 of us, and suddenly, I mean, they were telling God just how that election goes, <coughs> top of our voices, everything, marching up and down, <laughs> We're funny, aren't we? Tell God what to do. But anyway, <laughs> suddenly that coomp, something fell on me from heaven, fell on me. And, you know, the subject, the Bible says that the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets. That means the prophets don't have to get up and interrupt the preacher. They're, 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 their spirits are subject to them. And, and, and the Bible tells us, if there's no interpreter, we'll just keep it to yourself. Or if somebody has a stronger anointing, just keep it to yourself. So that's the way to have order. But this was like two times in my life, if you don't open your mouth and say this, you are going to be killed on the spot. Wow. And it was. Boom! Out from me. One thing will save America, and it is not an election. It is an awakening to God. One thing will avail for Israel and the nations. It is an awakening to God. That was the whole word. And then through my mind went, the best person in the world could be elected president would do no good if the people don't awaken to God. <laughs> history, American history, awakenings, study, the place of prayer and awakenings. So that I didn't know too much about it before that. But after that, that's when I studied, and that's when I wrote the book. And this, this book will really help you as, as you're praying now today. And so we, we got real still there in that prayer meeting. What, what do we want to do with this? What do you want us to do with this, Lord? And uh, it seemed like, okay, I'll study. That's my part here. And then we'll, we'll pray, and we'll use our influence as much as we can about getting, helping people pray for an awakening. And um, about that time, July 7, I got a telephone call from Zona, Norval Hayes' daughter. And Zona said to me, I, I, I looked in my journal and I found it. Early today, today, Zona called me and told me this gentleman had called her, believing he had a word from the Lord for me and for Prayer Mountain. She said he never calls her like this, and she believes in his ministry. He fills in for her and her father at the church when they're away. His name is Gene Weisman. She gave me the home phone and cell phone. His wife answered. This is what I wrote that day. His wife answered. In her voice, I could hear goodness and reverence for God. He was out watering trees. They need rain in Tennessee. His voice, too, reminded me of humble Holy Ghost people who know and reverence God. Too much even to speak a thing in his name without believing that he gave it to them. About three months ago, he'd had a dream or a vision, and he told me about it. So would you come up, Brother Wiseman, and tell us about that dream? Because it has to do with you. You're in it. You're in that vision. You, you who are here tonight, you're not here by chance. You're in the vision. You're one of the ones he saw. Hallelujah. Brother Gene Wiseman. He's a prophet. 
Sister Billy, before I share that, could we just take a moment and, and thank God for the spirit of revelation? Yes. Let's do that. Thank you, just Lord, thank you. for the Lord, spirit of revelation. thank you for the spirit of revelation. Give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Lord, the spirit thank you, Lord, of revelation. For the spirit we of revelation. We thank you, God, for visions. Visions. Oh, yes, Lord, visions. Lord, we thank you. Visions, visions. Lord, we thank you that you're moving amongst your people today in the supernatural. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, as you've heard me tell up before, uh, and Sister Billy, I think with what we're experiencing today, is exactly what that amber vision mm -hmm. was about. Mm -hmm. uh, we're walking this out. Mm -hmm. But it was April the 13th, 2008, 3.30 in the morning. I, had, uh, I was ministering in Tazewell, Virginia, uh, and staying in a little room up over that church. And after the service that night, I just went into a spirit of prayer, just the spirit of praying. It was the spirit praying th through me, tongues, English. And uh, I don't know what time I went to sleep. Don't know how long I'd been asleep, but when I woke up, I looked at the clock. I usually do that if I wake up in the night. And... Uh, Noticed it was 3.30 in the morning. But the dream slash vision, I was in an assembly. It was a large uh, building. Uh, it was full, people seated, people standing around the sides of the wall. And I heard a voice. And the voice said, there are ambers lying all over the ground on Prayer Mountain. Now, I didn't know you. I didn't know the name of your ministry. I just heard of Billy Brim only in brief. Knew nothing about her, where she was from. Uh, Brother Norval, I know he had had you by for a meeting or two up at Gatlinburg, I believe it mm -hmm. was. But every time you were scheduled to be there, I was scheduled to be elsewhere. And, but I heard this voice saying, there are ambers lying all, not ambers, not embers, but ambers. And there's a difference. Lying all over the ground on Prayer Mountain. Well, in this dream, I turned, I knew I was going to turn to see the voice. You know, like John said, he turned to see the voice. I, in the dream, that was the way it came. I was turning to see the voice. But I had premeditated in my mind in this dream what I was going to see. I thought that it would be people standing around a bonfire, even though the word was ambers and not embers. Well, when I turned... To see the voice, I saw a wall of fire. It was, it, it was glowing like a hot coal or a piece of wood that's been burning. It was just glowing, this wall was. Was I looked at this wall and I looked at it, I noticed it was, looked like images of people. Well, I went closer to the wall, and I thought, well, this is people. And they were standing so erect, almost militant, as if they were uh, just steel and glowing with this uh, <coughs> fire glow. And it was extremely high and real thick. Well, they were marching forward, and... The more they marched, the bigger the wall became. The more forward they went, the wall just began to grow in thickness. And uh, from there, 
the next part was I was taken to a real high place. And it was like I saw the complete planet. I saw all the earth. And it was covered in a real darkness. Just, a, I mean, a darkness. And, but in the midst of the darkness, it was like the earth almost looked like the sky. It was so dark and so black. But in the midst of this darkness, it was as if someone was hitting a circuit breaker and turning on lights. Lights started springing up in the midst of this darkness in different areas around the world, different communities, the islands, the continents. I began, and when these lights began to come on, it expelled all the darkness that was around them. And the more lights came on, the more the darkness began to move back. Well, awakened from there, and then I went to praying, and the Lord took me to those scriptures in Ezekiel about the amber and being clothed up on the amber and so on. And then how God had put you in touch with that gentleman who was a specialist concerning ambers, and how that it's one of the strongest. Now, remember, it was ambers lying all over the ground on Prayer Mountain. And we discovered that amber is one of the strongest preservatives that there is. These ambers were the prayers. Now, we know geographically the, the place out here called Prayer Mountain. And you know, Sister Billy, I think of this every time I go out there. I mean, has everyone here been out to Prayer Mountain? How many of you have been to Prayer Mountain? And uh, I mean, putting it, describing it in the boonies. <laughs> the word boonie almost sounds metropolitan <laughs> <laughs> compared to Prayer, Prayer Mountain. And, but every time I go out there, I think, I can't help but think about Elijah. He was a man of the wilderness. I mean, even looking at John, when John showed up, uh, a woodsman came talking about trees, axes, you know, and just, uh, just a real woodsman. And, uh, but here, geographically, that's the home base. But Prayer Mountain <coughs> has grown to be something global. I mean, every place, it almost seems like every place you go, you'll meet someone that will come up, and I'm a WWP, <laughs> with this darkness. Here's this praying, this prayer move. I'm going to tell you, it's, I believe that this prayer move is one of the strongest moves. Absolutely. That God himself <coughs> has raised up. Actually, it was too big for you to raise up. Oh, my But it wasn't goodness. too big for the God that you represent to raise up. And that darkness, this darkness that's covering the land. You know, uh, I encourage you to that last chapter of Malachi. Learn it, study it, even memorize it. It's only six verses. I mean... The day that cometh that will burn as an oven. And, but it goes on down. And, of course, now, like you said, we know that God has other plans for his people. Come on and say it. I'm going to higher ground. Yes, hallelujah. <clears throat> and, but when you, but under you, 
that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. This darkness that's covering the land, I believe it's going to get a little bit darker myself. But I believe, but unto us the fear of his name shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Uh, of course, over there in Revelations, where uh, that uh, red horse, that black horse, he said, that right there, he said, don't you touch the oil and the wine. And Sister Billy, that fourth horse, that pale horse, that sickly horse, and those sicknesses, those plagues, those diseases, but yet this Psalm 91, not one of those things shall come nigh our dwelling. I don't believe that we fully realize what we are holding back. It, I shared this, I think I mentioned it to you the other day. If there can be a premature birth, there can be a premature death, right? When, when Satan took Jesus to the high place and said, cast yourself down. Isn't it written, angels shall bear thee? He was trying to... Get Jesus to come. Yeah, announce himself before his time, yeah. Absolutely. He was trying to get him to, to say, I'm the Messiah, but without his going to the cross. He was trying to push him into that. Satan is trying to push some things, but I want to go back about those ambers. We found out in our study... That amber, like this, this tree sap comes down, and then it, it hardens, and if it has a little insect in it, or if it has a seed in it from thousands of years ago, you can plant the seed, and it will grow. So the Lord said there are ambers all over Prayer Mountain, and he told you to tell me, and you didn't even know me. Didn't know. And you had to go to your daughters. There's Labriska over there, and your other daughter, and one of them said, well, Daddy, she calls her ministry that. So he called us. I got him to call the prayer group just after we'd been told to pray in an awakening to God. And he shared this about the embers and the wall. That's you. That's the people. That's the prayers. The prayers. And the darkness was on the earth. And then he yes. saw the lights. They were the prayer people. Right. Now, Brother David Lewis had a vision. You remember David Lewis? David Lewis was, was at one time the number one Assemblies of God minister of prophecy. How many of you knew Dr. David Lewis? Read his books. Oh, my goodness, what a man of God. Well, she heard you, Ramona, heard you tell this vision. At, oh, David Lewis, I mean, he's known by the leaders of Israel. He's, his daughter is the head of uh, Bridges for Peace. So he's, he's, he's known six prime ministers. He's an amazing man of God. And so we walked together. He said, when he heard me teach prophecy, he said, you believe prophecy like me more than any person I've ever heard. So um, she heard you tell that story about the blackness mm. and the lights. And then she said, uh, when Gene Wiseman shared the vision God had given him when he was looking down on the earth, she said it's almost identical to what Dave saw and wrote in his book, Smashing the Gates of Hell in the Last Days. This is what David wrote. In September 1973, the Lord spoke to me by means of a vision in the night. It is clear and vivid in my mind right now as I write this. In the vision, I was elevated high above the earth looking down upon it. I saw many lights scattered over the land masses of the continents. The Spirit showed me that the symbol of the light spoke of how the gospel is shining forth throughout the whole world. There were more lights in Russia and China than I would have expected. Some area had few lights where the gospel is not known or declared. I praised God for the wonder of his creation, for our beautiful earth, and I praised him for the going forth of the gospel. I felt very peaceful. I looked at the blaze of lights in the United States and Canada and South America and other areas. I felt a great thankfulness and a sense of tranquility. I felt we could continue sending out the gospel to the dark parts of the world, thus completing the task of fulfilling the Great Commission. But suddenly, my emotions changed. I was uneasy. Some dark foreboding gripped my mind. Dark, thick, ugly clouds began to creep up around the horizons of the earth. They spread rapidly until they blanketed the whole earth. Only a few lights feebly showed through. This symbolized the coming persecution of the church. 
the church, church was driven by the anti-God forces that even now work in the world. No longer could the church openly hold services. Mm. Broadcasts over TV and television and radio. Pass out literature. I cried in horror. Oh, God, must this be? The Holy Spirit spoke in response to my tortured question. And it was like thunder in my soul. No, it is not inevitable. This is what will happen to the church if the church fails in its mission and task. Yes. If the church is apathetic and continues in materialism and worldly pursuits, this is what will happen. But it can be prevented. I began to rebuke this manifestation of Satan's power. The clouds rolled back. And I saw earth as at the beginning of the vision. I asked the Lord what we should do to prevent Satan's victory. The answer came, let believers everywhere be united in prayer and faith. Hallelujah. Suddenly, all the lights on earth were interconnected mm. by beams of light, making a lacework of light over the earth the church united in prayer. Hallelujah. And then he wrote out something uh, which he called the Holy Spirit generation in which simultaneous, simultaneously believers will join together and generate spiritual energies which can be directed as thunderbolts of God's Holy Ghost power against the citadels of hell that are trying to push things yes. not at God's timing. Absolutely. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, this is what this is all about. You are those embers. You are those people who have within you hallelujah. what is long, long ago that God has preserved. God has preserved from those prayers in the upper room. God has preserved from my great-grandparents. God has preserved from Azusa Street. Those things are in you. You've heard about them. You've cultivated them. You've longed for them. Hallelujah. You're, they're hallelujah. in you. And they're to come forth to God. They're to be planted and bring forth. And that's what we're about. Our nation is in trouble. Yes. Intolerable things have happened. There is one answer. And that answer is you. Hallelujah. And that answer is, I don't know where the red light is on. You. That answer is you. 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 All you are out there. We're not going to sit in the second chair this week. Mm -mm. We're going to sit in the first chair. And we're going to put God above everything else and love above everything else. And we are going to pray. Yes. And we're going to believe, hallelujah, yes. that the lights are coming on and we're pushing oh, back oh, and holding back oh, the Antichrist. Oh, the Bible is clear oh, that the Antichrist is not to come forth until so. that which withholds him is out of the way. And that would be us. So we're holding him back. We're holding him back this very week. We're pushing him back. You don't have any oughts and you don't have any innies. Right? You put all those oughts and innies on the, on the altar, didn't you? You got them on there? Thank you, Brother Wiseman. I'm going to ask Brother... Billy, on, can I say this? Our praying, the prayers that have went before us as preserved, we are preserved. Yeah. We are the seed of prayers that has went before us. Yes. That's, that's that preserving. You know, Sister Billy, you, here's one way to look at it too. Noah, that was a water age. The Exodus was the age of the blood. This is the Holy Ghost age. Yes, hallelujah. Glory. That darkness will be expelled. It has to go. Premature. It's, it's not prematurely. Time. It's not time. Not time. It's not time. Glory. It's not time for those yes. seven years. It's not time for those four horsemen. It's not time. Bless the Lord. Glory. We're here and we're holding back the Antichrist. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Now, Brother Wiseman, I was going to have you stay up here in one of these chairs, and I'm going to ask uh, Brother, uh, uh, if you'll sit right here, you can, I believe, um, I'll, sit, I'll sit here. Brother Max can sit here. Come on, Brother Max. And come on up here to uh, Quinn. Oh, I'm telling you, folks, if we can't have the supernatural, I don't know when on God's green earth we're going to get it. If we can't start operating in some of the things of the supernatural and power, God went in it. Brah. Dear God, God is supernatural. Hallelujah. Bless the, bless the Lord. Now, um, Max, you're going to have to say your last name for me. What is, your, what is your family? Am I on? You're on. Okay. And then just give this to your lovely wife. Okay. Who I don't know how you got anyway. <laughs> Miracles. Miracle. Miracles. That's how I got her. Miracle. That's how you got her. Even I didn't even praise the Lord. Well, here we go. I'll tell you a little bit of their story. <laughs> Max was Muslim, born in Jordan, uh, fought in the Jordan army, and he was stationed on the, uh, if you've ever been to Israel, there's a great rift that's a border between Israel and Jordan. It's way deep. But the sides of the mountains that it divides are close. And he was on the Jordanian side. And he would see Israeli soldiers on this side. And what did you think, Brother Max? What I was thinking, I have my M16 and M60 in the Jeep and lots of ammos. Because I'm originally Palestinian. My grandparents, Palestinian, my both parents were born in Palestine in Beit Shan, That they took our land. My first thought is, I'm just waiting for that soldier to make him move. Kick a fly over his face, scratch his ear, so I could react and take him out. That's you hated was... Israel, did you? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the time, yes. Yeah, do you love him now? Oh, yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. What changed you? God changed my heart. Yeah, yeah. there you have it. The Lord changed my heart. And he told me, it was very specific. He said, I changed your heart from the hate for Israel to the love for Israel. Because yeah. I'm telling you right now, there is no one can do that except him. Yeah. Not just for me, for any Muslim, any Palestinians, yeah. any Arab, born, raised, hating Israel. Now, Quinn, the land of Palestine. she is Christian, dedicated Christian. And she married a Muslim, not him, his brother. You didn't know this was coming. <laughs> and they had a child, and the brother died. Now, in the way of the Muslim faith, kind of like it was for the Old Testament Jews, the brother supposed to marry the wife. So then what happened? Uh, you were living here in the United States, right? Yes. Yes, I was living here. Now, the brother had become a Christian, the one that died. Okay, go ahead. Yes. Um, I received a knock on my door from another brother who also lived in the U.S., and he said... Um, I have a strange question for you. My mom's wondering if you would marry my youngest brother uh, to keep our daughter Anna in the family. So yep. that, what'd you do? Um, well, I prayed a lot. Um, I was attending Living Word Christian um, Center at the time, but before Brahim, um, my first husband, died, he had a dream, and he wrote a letter back in the days when people would write letters. He wrote me a letter, um, and in his dream, his youngest brother had come to him and had admonished him um, that he was not taking care of me and Anna, and so that the youngest brother was going to take over. So when he passed away, I remembered that letter, um, and I just felt that was the Lord telling me that this was what I was supposed to do. And she had a friend. What was that friend's name? Uh, yeah, my friend Jan Hoselton. <laughs> and she was a lady that knows God. 
And uh, she, she said, this is God for her to marry him. Now, what'd you think? Oh, I thought it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> My well, sentiments exactly. <laughs> I mean, Jan, as a Muslim, when I came to this country, well, I, I really have to, okay, let me back up here. For us, the Middle Eastern, um, former Muslims, as a former Muslim, I'm telling you, as a, the way the Muslims work, that you have to do this, you have to honor your parents. So my mom came and asked me if I can think about marrying Quinn. I was gonna go to Russia for after high school, after the military. But um, it was very kind of like, I just couldn't tell my parents no. And to keep Anna in the family, somebody have to do it. So I communicated with Quinn and I found out she's really acceptable. I'm like, wow, she's, <laughs> she's open to it. She's and beautiful, my, my, the She's size. beautiful, yeah. Yeah, look at this. <laughs> 29 years almost. 29 marriage. years they've been married. Five kids, Anna's the oldest and two girls and two boys after Anna. Um, long story short, I didn't even speak English at all. So we have my cousin translate between us, phone calls. One day she have a phone bill of $750 in 91. I just sell my piano. She sold her to piano pay for to pay the, the bill. phone. Well, let's not get to the sale because I sold two cars to get to you. <laughs> to well, it wasn't camels. <laughs> no, it was cars. <laughs> um, Modern day, old times would be two camels, but yeah, yeah, no cars. <laughs> but um, it was it was uh, back when the uh, without my daughter, the Iranian movie. Yeah, uh, not without my daughter. Not without my yeah. daughter. So Anna couldn't come with her. So I bought her the first ticket and non-refundable with Royal Jordanian. So I sold the car to get her and she didn't come. So I lost the first ticket. Then I have another car that I partner with my friend, and I said, listen, if you don't come this time. Um, don't even bother, don't think about it. So I thought, this is maybe a way out too, I'm going to Russia. <laughs> but she came, and I totally didn't have to bring Anna because of, you know, people, people influence. Like, don't, don't go, they're gonna kidnap your daughter, they're gonna do this, they're gonna do that. Then she came, and the reason for her to come, because I couldn't really get a visa to come to visit, uh, even after my brother's death. I wanna make it really short, so I changed two passports, and I thought the embassy won't even know. But no, they stamped my passport twice, two different passports with uh, rejection. Anyway. Here so, you are. Here, here, here I am. Yeah. Then she came to Jordan and we got married over there. So uh, anyway, they're married. In 19 years, she's praying for him. Yes. She's a dedicated Christian. She's praying for him. And he, um, I don't know, uh, I got a kind of the picture that, that you were she said you had kind eyes. I heard her say that. But uh, you were not just a perfect husband. No. No. And uh, even the dog. I admit it. I wasn't. And the dog didn't like him. That's true. Now, they're living, in, they're living in Minneapolis, and he has a business. I don't know where the business was when you heard the voice. But uh, anyway, the dog didn't even like him. How would the dog act when you were coming home? Oh, he just run out. Run. They don't like dogs. Uh, Muslims, Arabs don't like dogs. No. But his daughter wanted a dog and he wanted to please My her. She's growing oldest. up in America, so he got her this little Shih Tzu. Yeah. And he hates you. He hit my guts, yes. Yeah. He just couldn't, couldn't stand me. I mean, the dog, if I am, if I am upstairs, we live in a split level home. If I'm upstairs, the dog ran downstairs. If I'm downstairs, he ran upstairs. If we meet in the hallway, he just get confused which way to go. <laughs> Turn around or run by my feet. I mean, true story. But um, now, how how did you get born again after 19 years? After 19 years, I had a business, and the business failed. And the the reason for the business failed because I trusted people to help me out while I was working with another job in manufacturing. Long story short, I got in trouble. When you get in trouble, we always remember God when we get in trouble. So. As I, I was a Muslim at the time, so I started praying for Allah and Muhammad. Um, praying and praying, praying and praying, for maybe for 45 minutes. And when I prayed, don't picture me, 
Don't paint the picture that I'm going up and down, I'm washing. No, I have, I have my head on my desk like this in the shop, and I was just asking Allah and Muhammad to do something. Anyway, prior to that, she know what's going on. I don't really tell her much because she get, she get worried. And you know, I'm tough guy here. But prior to that, I said, you know, she always pray for me. I'm gonna ask her to pray, maybe something will happen. So maybe I, I, I have a dealership. Maybe I'll sell some vehicles. And you know, vehicles are not cheap. You know, you need like three or four, five to cover your overhead cost. At least 10 vehicles of sale to cover your overhead cost every month. Anyway, so I went to Quinn and I asked her to pray. And then she agreed and she prayed. Next day I sell three cars. Then I'm like, this just happened. Then go back, nothing happened after that. Three, four, five days, nothing happened. I pray, nothing happened. Then I go back to Quinn. She prayed. Next morning, the day after, everything is good. The money's coming. Anyway, so that happened a lot. Um, one day I was praying in my shop. I did it twice. And really, I did it when I was praying. You know when you pray just from really deep, the bottom of your heart. And that's what happened to me the first time and the second time. I never felt myself praying in Arabic to Allah and Muhammad as much as those two times. The second time, the first time the Lord spoke to me and he said... You heard an audible voice. I heard an audible voice right behind me. And I was in the shop, in the shop area of my business. And he said, son, come to me, you need me. And um, when I heard the voice, I looked behind, there is nobody there. Then he said again, son, come to me. You need me. The voice, the sound, you can't make it up with a mic or anything. It just filled up the whole shop. I felt it like almost squishing me like a bubble. So what Max did, took off, left lights on, everything, <laughs> ran out of the building, jumped in my car, went home, not a word to Quinn. Because I know it's going to happen, even if I, I was trying to observe what just happened. But if I went and I told Quinn, I heard the voice and this and that, she said, oh, this is Jesus, come on, let's go to church. <laughs> Max doesn't want to do that, he's not ready. So, four weeks after that, we kept doing the same thing. I pray, she prayed, make self, I pray, nothing happened. Four weeks later, I was praying to Allah and Muhammad. And I said, then the voice came back again to me and he said, son, come to me. And I said, no, I didn't say anything at the time, but he said, son, come to me, son, you need me. And then I said, who is this? So I have the courage to say, who is this? The first time I ran away, the second time, like somebody is talking to me here. <laughs> then I said, who is this? And he said, I am Isa, I am Messiah, I am Jesus. Because he was talking to me in Arabic, Isa al Messiah. Jesus the Messiah. Jesus. And then he said, Muhannad, my old name, my um, birth name. Birth name is Muhannad. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll help you out every chance. I know you will. <laughs> so my birth name is Muhannad, which I changed it legally to Max Jude Erhayim, which is Erhayim is my dad's name. That's what our family name now, just because of threats and Muslims, my family, etc. That's another story. Anyway, then. Um, when he called me by my name, when he said Muhammad, that's what really turned the light bulb on. I'm like, wait a minute, Allah doesn't call Muslims. It, it, it's, his name was not Muhammad. Mo not Muhammad. Muhammad. It's with Muhammad. An Two ends as an Nancy. Muhammad. And uh, when he called me by my name, I'm like, hmm, Allah doesn't call Muslims by their name. They call them slaves, which is Abdi. Right, Pastor? Bulus, there's a, I'm going to take three minutes to share Bulus' story. This is very, very miracles of a prayer. Miracles, if you don't mind. Um, when he called me by my name, I'm having the chill all over me again right now. He, it's just like something is going on here. This is not Allah. This is not Muhammad. It has to be somebody else. And he called, he already told me, introduced himself to me. He said, I am Jesus. I am Isa. I am al Messiah." And that's when I'm like, okay. I took off, but I didn't run away, <laughs> trying to observe. I walked out of the building. I actually turned the lights off, and I shut the door. I locked the door. 
The first time, the reason I ran, because there's a crematory, or what, what do you call it? Crematory. Crematory building behind me, and I was on a tour two weeks prior, and I thought, they came out. I mean, really, that was a lot of rustling going in my mind at the time. But I believe that was even the devil at the time, like, this is not, whatever, just run, take off. Anyway. My next, door, my next door neighbor, three doors house, is, is Pastor Mike Killer, who's in Grand Forks, North Dakota, uh, pastor of Living Word in Grand Forks. And he's my neighbor, and whenever he sees me, he, he, we don't, we're neighbors, we talk, but whenever he's walking his dog out on the sidewalk, when I see him coming, I run inside the house because I know he's going to talk about Jesus. So <laughs> Max is not ready for that. One day I got caught. I went out of the garage, the back door of the garage, I thought I, I made it to the backyard, but then he turned around back to his home, and by the time I came back, he was right face to face to me. Anyway, I love Pastor Mike, so that's where I was saved. But I'm telling you guys, I don't want to make it too long. But you went to Pastor Mike's church. I went to Pastor Mike's church. Why did church. you go? He, well, he, he's, I mean, he's I mean, loving you had, because... You had the voices speak to you. I had the voices speak to me. So I went... I didn't even tell Quinn the second time when the voices speak. She didn't know any of that. That was later. But I went to church because I don't know why I went to church. <laughs> they, have, they have a miracle night on Wednesday night. You, a you miracle guys, you, night. It was, you that's what Pastor it Mike was, said. It was January, and Pastor Mike was starting the year off by dedicating a week to prayer. It's a word of faith, church. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so the one night was praying for healing. One night was praying for finances. One night was praying for miracles. So I asked Max if he would come to church to pray. And I, I did. I wasn't really one going or willing to go. But until today, I mean, all I could tell you, God brought me there. Because if it's me, I won't even, I won't, he, he just took me there. And my business was less than two miles from the church. I drive by it every day, twice, three times a day. So I went to, to the service and I was sitting just in the middle aisle in the center like the brother in the blue jean jacket there. And Pastor Mike was standing somewhere there. And he was... After he's done with his message, he said, anybody need prayer? Anybody need miracles? Any, any, anybody? And something happened at that moment. Um, he looked me in the eye, and I kind of, you know, when you don't want to, just like a guilty deal. So my eyes went like this, like a spinning around. <laughs> I don't want to look at him. I really don't want to look at him because I know it's coming or something. I just don't want to have an eye contact. <laughs> then all of a sudden, this power, this power came from behind my back, between my shoulders, and just picked me up, shoved me to the aisle, and pushed me forward to the altar. And Pastor Mike was standing right there in the center. And the way I walked, I always tell this story because it was in North Dakota. North Dakota is flat out. I mean, you lose a dog in North Dakota, you still see it for two months. <coughs> Especially if it's white. Anyway. Um, so I was, I was going down with no control of myself. There's pressure behind my shoulders, but my feet ahead of me because I'm fighting it back. I don't want to go. I could, I remember I could see my feet literally going forward on my back, backward. From the I, I, then I stood before Pastor Mike and I looked him in the eye. And he said, he said this to me. He said, Muhammad, you know, I love you so much. And you know, Jesus, God loves you so much. Would you accept him as your God and Savior tonight? Lord and Savior tonight. And I nodded my head with tears and I said, yes. My Jesus. And I repeated after him the prayer of salvation. And I'm telling you guys, after that moment, after that second, I felt like probably sandbags over my shoulder on me. I felt like I could walk on my toes. I really can't describe how I felt. It's everything is lifted. All the stress that I was dealing with is gone. I couldn't understand it myself. And I'm, I'm, I'm like observing, trying to under, like, did I just do this? And the second I walked out of the church, we drove separate. 
Twin looked at me and said, did you just accept the Lord? And I'm like, mm-hmm. I kind of <laughs> looked at her. She wasn't sure. And I, I did accept the Lord, but the devil got me right the second I got in the car. I knew this after the fact that he it was the devil because he tried to talk me out of it. Even I heard the Lord's voice. He called me by my name. Like, what did you do? What are you going to tell your family? How are you going to handle this? Did you do this? They're going to kill you. All these, all these words, negativity, was just very strong going into my head. Anyway, I got home. Remember the dog? Got home. And he actually sensed me from the street, I believe. From the driveway. I mean, he, he, he probably hear my truck and he... The just, kids said that's how they knew. That's how the kids their, told their He just ran. The dog would run. When, I can't remember, was it Marina or Anna? They, when they see the dog running, they said, oh, dad is home. Before even I walk in, dad is home. Um, I didn't really torture him or anything, but... I, I, think, I, I think he saw devils. He saw the truth. So when I walked into the house, I walked into the house, I just want to, I just want to sit down, I want to relax, I want to just understand what just happened here from the past and the Lord speaking to me and being saved, I sat on my chair in my recliner and the dog never really got close to me. That night, the second I sat on my chair and put my feet up, the dog came running and he sat by my feet. He jumped on the chair and sat by my feet. And that's when I couldn't believe that I accepted the Lord. That <laughs> True story. That's true. And it made me actually, it made me feel good. I believe the Lord put him there just to ensure like... Sure. Something did happen. Something did happen. This, this dog is looking at you different. He sees you different. He sees something in you right now. There is no devil in you. I know I, 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 know I was walking with devils all over. Yeah. I knew I, I that. I think that's what the After my saw. salvation. I, I knew that. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's the control of the, the, the devil, the religion, devilish religion. Put it that way. Now, um, I'm going to butt in here. Okay. Interrupt. Uh, what year was that that you came to hear me speak? Oh, 94. 1994. Sure, 94. She's, now what year got, you got saved? 2011. 2011. January 2011. So this is a long time before he got saved. Yeah. So I'm going to be at McInland Hammond's church and I'm going to speak and she wants him to go to church so badly. And so she tells him a woman is going to speak on? Palestine. Palestine. She's not allowed to say Israel in the house. No. Isn't that mean? Or Jesus. Or Jesus. She, she, he doesn't allow her to do that. I think I'll hit you now. Let's see. <laughs> so. She wouldn't. She told him that this woman is going to be there. So they come in. They're sitting in the church. It's a big church. We were in that church the other night, and he was telling this story where he was sitting. And uh, Mike Keller's sister-in-law was behind me. She said, I'm oh. Mike Keller's sister-in-law. So, it, I mean, you know, people there that saw yeah. it and knew it. Anyway, he's back there, and I start talking about Israel and that the land belongs to Israel. And what did you do? I stomped out of the church, and I said, you brought me to listen to this lady talking about Israel? Very much what's wrong with you. So I said, I'm leaving. You can walk or come out now, ride with me in the car, because I'm taking the car and going home. So that was, he stomped out. Yeah. Fast forward, after he gets born again, like happens with a lot of Muslims, he starts seeing visions and hearing God. And a lot of it has to do with the Middle East and things happening in the Middle East. And so someone tells him, you need to get your visions judged. You need someone to judge your vision. So he asked a pastor, and the pastor said, I don't know anything about the Middle East and what's going on over there, but there's a woman down in Missouri who does. <laughs> and her name is Billy Brim. This is the lady he stomped out on. So he calls me. He comes down here, and we talk. And I told him I'd pray about it. And I did pray about it, and the Lord told me to do it. And now, I, I don't think that there could be uh, someone better qualified, but, but I am well qualified to help you judge visions because I grew up, my spiritual father is Kenneth e. Hagen, and his life and ministry was open-eyed visions of Jesus, and he knew how to judge them. And he told me one time, because Brenda had a lot of visions, and 
he told her as a, as a child, and, and, and I went to him about it, and he said, you tell her, because sometimes it was of the devil. He said, you tell her not to stop the visions, but to know that they can come from either the darkness or the light, and for her to judge how to tell the difference, and to stand against the darkness, and don't let the devil talk, and here's how you judge it. When the Spirit's in manifestation, the Spirit cannot say Jesus came in the flesh. We know that from 1 John. And also, provide the word. God, uh, G Brother Hagin would say, you look like Jesus and you sound like Jesus, but I want you to give me two or three witnesses of, from the scriptures of what you just said to me. So we talked about that. And uh, then um, we prayed together. And on November 15, 2020, Max heard me as we're praying. He heard me in Arabic. And the Lord said, pay attention. This is an assignment. Mm -hmm. You are going to hear in Arabic what Billy is saying of... What is yet to come? Pay attention to what you hear in Arabic, your native tongue. She speaks in Arabic to you with no accent. Now, I don't believe that I speak Arabic, but he hears me in I perfect hear Arabic. Hear he hears me like it was my mother tongue. I believe that this is exactly what happened in Acts chapter 2. They heard them speak in their own language. Not they spoke in the net languages of the people that came from all over the world. They heard them speak. She speaks in Arabic to you with no accent. I am revealing to you both through all the saints in prayer. So what he's receiving is an interpretation of what the saints are praying. That's right. What the ambers are praying, what the wall of fire is praying, what the lights are praying. It's the interpretation of that. It wouldn't work. Max and I have taught a lot about this. It wouldn't work if I just met with Max in a room and we just prayed like that. No. no. It's the interpretation of the prayers of the saints. It's interpretation of the prayer force. Bless the Lord. So... Tonight, what we're going to do is the Lord has instructed us. We're going to what he has us do. Wednesday's our prayer day, 8 o'clock. And how many of you pray with us at 8 o'clock in the morning? 8 o'clock on Wednesday's prayer day. Wednesday noon, prayer day. Today, we didn't have Wednesday noon. The Lord said, put it to Wednesday night. So this is Wednesday night, and you're here, and we're going to do what we would have done at noon. Now, do you need Amen. to tell about the brother here first? Yeah, uh, really quick. Come on, come on up. Paul. Who is this? Uh, Paul, Bulus. His Arabic name is Bulus. Bulus is Paul. In English, it's Paul. Uh, we need a microphone for brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see your name here. You got a name tag on? Paul. You'll see Paul. Arabic is upside down to me. <laughs> Did you put it upside down? <laughs> Bolus Yusuf? Yes. Yeah. Same as Joseph. Yes. Yosef, uh huh. Now, yeah. really quick here. I grew up in Jordan in a city called Erbit. Erbit is in the very far north, not too far from Lake of Galilee. It's about 25 kilometers. I'm talking, but we're not allowed to go there. Anyway, so Paul was in Egypt. Are you Egyptian? He's Egyptian. Mm -hmm. He's Egyptian. And this is. God, when God does something, oh my goodness. My family from Egypt, 750 years ago, they used to be Christians. Your family they, was Christian 750 yes, years ago? Yes, yes. I never knew they it. They changed their beliefs back then, and they got kicked out of Egypt because of their beliefs, and they went to Palestine. It's another story. You never, never told, told me told that, that story, no. You told me about him, but you didn't tell me about your family. Okay, you from... presently didn't hear oh, okay. it, because I don't... So, Pastor Paul, when did you come to Jordan? Uh, what year? 79. 79. Now, in Jordan, between King Hussein and Yasser Arafat, um, there is always 
problems that actually tried to take over Jordan in the 70s. Arafat, Yasser, yeah. Yasser yeah. Arafat. Civil war. So there is militia, there is wars, there is um, Black civil, civil war. war. Yeah, all the time. So he came, he went from Egypt. The Lord told him. Yeah, you're a Christian, right? He's a Christian. Yes, I'm a Coptic Orthodox. Coptic. But I accept Jesus uh, when I was 15 years old. I accept Jesus, but uh, it's it's a long story. It's a long story. I, I take just this part. This one. <laughs> <laughs> He's been here for three years. God's yeah. at work all over the world. Uh, oh yes. Now <laughs> his, Mars. So he came. He went to. He's supposed to come to Jordan, but he went from Egypt, from Cairo, to Syria, and continue on to Jordan. When he get, when he landed in Syria, he liked Syria so much, and then the Lord told him, "No, you're going to Jordan. You can't stay in Syria." But Lord, there is issues in Jordan. He said, you'll be fine. You Civil war, I mean, Civil it was war. bad. When Yasser Arafat rose up against King Hussein, yeah. King Hussein had his brother, military head, mow him down, kill him. I think, how many did he shoot? Oh. Thousands. Thousands. And Thousands. then they ran away to South Lebanon. That's another story. Yeah. But it was yeah. bad in Jordan. It was bad. And here's the other bad story. Any of you heard of Abu Nidal? Palestinian militia. My dad hit him in our house when I was a little boy. I knew Abu Nidal. He walked in with thousands, hundreds, thousands of dollars. That's another story. You know that one. I know. Okay, let's. You want to finish it? We want to yeah, make I, it really quick. No, I, I, I make it quickly. Okay. Yeah, when I accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, or Lord, and Lord, uh, in 77, he told me, go to Jordan. I go to ask somebody, where is Jordan? He said, it's a small country near Israel. I was in a, a Pentecostal church, fire with the Holy Spirit, speaking tongues, and I, Lord, I leave my church, I leave my, my family, and go to a small country near Israel? No, 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 this is not the voice of the Lord. This is, no, 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 no. <clears throat> I start to rebuke this voice. Three years, I say no until 79, uh, in, in February, the, uh, the Lord take the uh, off, like, like make off for my spiritual life. I go into the church, I feel like I am, I like sheer, like nothing. I, all the church jumping and laughing and speaking thanks, only me, nothing. Then I go to the Lord, I fall down, I say, what do you want, what, what do you need? What do you ask me to do? He's, go to Jordan. <laughs> oh. I, I go to travel agent and ask for ticket for any Arab country, not to Jordan. <laughs> they said, yeah, we have a ticket to Syria. You can go to Syria. I said, okay, I go to Syria. 18th March, 79, I've been in airport of Damascus. I want to stay in Damascus. Damascus is good. I go outside of the airport and say, okay, Lord, I left my family. I left my, my house. I left my church. Sorry. I am here. Uh, what do you want? He said, go to Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Jordan. <laughs> this night, I go to Jordan. I be in Amman at 3 o'clock morning. Uh, I, uh, the, the, the driver leave me in the middle of the street, and there is nobody in the street. Nothing, nothing in the street. I spent half an hour, it's very cold. I, I go to die from the cold. I say, Lord, three years you say go to Jordan, and I'm here. You want to kill me here? He said, No! <laughs> go to hotel. <laughs> and minutes, I find a taxi driver came and opened the window and said, Come, uh, where you want to go? I said, To the hotel. <laughs> and he took me to the hotel. And in 1990, uh, the Lord talked to me and said, go to, to the north, leave and man the capital. I go to the north. I say, Lord, yes. I go to the north. Which is my hometown. It's to his hometown. His to town. Yeah. To Max's hometown. And this town, sorry, it's bondage with the spirits. Bondage with spirits. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, I, 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 uh, when I start to, to, uh, to ministry, I can't pray <sighs> like this. Did you, did you go into like place and you can't like pray? Choking. It's because like, of the like darkness. Heavy. Yeah. Like I can't pray and ask, what I can do? He said, go like 
do like Jericho. Lord, yes, I will do it. I take four with me, five speaking tongues, two hours a day, and go around Irbit, his town. His town. March around the town. Six months, two hours a day. Go around. And I pray near in the, the Here. family, near his, in, in the front of his family. Here's what happened. Yeah, My I parents' pray. house close to the university, he came and he opened a church half a mile from my parents. So when he go out and pray, he was walking in our neighborhood. He walked in the front of my parents' house. The first house and the second house. He knew the kids I grew up with, the Catholic kids I grew up, Krikor and Livon, and yeah. <laughs> he knew them all. He used to go sit and pray with them once a week. I'm gonna make it really short. We met here. How did we meet? He never met him over in Jordan. Yeah. We never met. God brought us together here in February of this year. So, and he said he was praying for Muslims. He was praying for my family. He know my dad's business stores. Dad, my dad have two businesses. He used to go to my dad's businesses. He know the neighbors. He know my, the people I grew up with, their parents. We met here. And you're talking about God and miracles. He was praying in tongues in the front of my parents' house. And I believe he put the seed right there. The seed, actually probably the seed was already there, but he watered it. Until he came here and he saw me. That's when we talked in February of this year. So if you ever have a problem in your life and you say, you know, I've been praying and nothing happened. God is not listening. It's his timing. Yes. You are not being obedient. God is listening. <clears throat> keep your faith yes. and keep your belief that he is doing something He's for working. you and for you. God's He's working. working. Yes. He God's will never working. stop. Yes. All over the world. All over. But we can't see him. He will never stop. But he's working when we yes. pray. He yes. always yes. tells us in the prayer calls. Like, he always tells us on the prayer calls. Yeah. yeah. You don't uh, see it. You don't see what I'm doing. After 30 years, I met him. Yeah. <laughs> after 30 years. Yeah. yeah. In Minneapolis. I met him Did it you. bless you when you found that he'd come to the Lord? Yes. <laughs> but of, when we met. My, one of the fruit. <laughs> yeah, fruit. There's one of your fruit. Yeah. yeah. The fruit. There's a fruit met, over there. When we met. A fruit you can else. see. Yes. When, when we met, you didn't know any of this until yes. we sat down and started talking. It's not like somebody lined it up. This lady called and she said, this guy from Jordan, he's Egyptian from Jordan. He would like to pray with you. We have a prayer night every Every, it used to be Tuesday, now every Thursday. So she said, can he come and pray with you? I said, sure. She gave me the address. He, she gave him the address, and she said, he's coming to your house. I said, is he for sure coming? She said, yeah, I think he is. Well, I don't know. I haven't heard from him. So we have people, and because of me, there's other issues going on. I've been chased before, other things going on. So th this Chris. guy walked in. This guy walked, knocked on the door, and I, when I opened the door, I don't know him. Like, who is this? Looking very much. And um, it was, and he said, I'm Pastor Paul Bullis. Then I remember the lady who texted that is a friend of his. I'm like, okay, come on, come on in. And we start praying. And after we're done praying, he told me all of this. I'm like, my goodness. God, Jesus brought God. He brought you here. God. That we have to meet. God. But God. God, but God. Your but prayers are working. Knows. Remember Thank Dean you. Braxton who went to heaven, my dear brother friend, and he's been talking to us. He said, your prayers have no shelf life. No. They don't expire after such and such a date. Now the instruction from the Lord was to go back. This is what my instruction was. Brother, where did he go? It's a, well, it's okay. Anyway, did I tell you to go back down there? It's taking forever for before we pray, um, we didn't start getting verses from the Lord right away in yeah. November. When it he was started, it started after the election. Yeah. So it started, I believe, in April, sometimes in April. And um, because of all of you, that's why we're getting these verses now. Now start we're getting so many verses from three, the Lord. Sometimes 20, sometimes 24, sometimes 10. It depends what the Lord wanted to tell us. And he told me, he said, this, this happened because your faith grew. 
Yes. His faith had to grow so that he could just say a scripture that we to. later look it up and it matches. Yeah. And our faith had to grow. But the, the point is, the Lord told me, your faith is growing. Amen. We're growing in we faith. Growing. We're growing in unity. And I could tell you right now, God is going to use this prayer meeting Amen. this week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And things are going to change for the United States of America. So now we're going to pray. And this don't you worry about it because God is in charge. That's you just right. pray. Don't so I'm going to have you come. I'm going to have some of um, helpers come and move this out of the way. I'll move and you. we're going to sit in chairs and I, we're going to pray like we do. The Lord's instructions to us on this assignment is... You want to move the chairs forward, you said? Yeah, we're going to move the chairs forward. I wanted brother, uh, other brother to come too because I want him, if he could, just to be up here with us. <laughs> You're a hard case, brother. <laughs> I can't help you. A threefold cord is not easily broken. And so, um, I'm going to sit here. I think I might have the table for the, for the computer because we look up the scriptures. Put me pretty close to him, pretty close yeah. to Max because he has to hear. Yeah. Uh, the, table can, um, the table can go in front of me, the least comfortable chair. I was going to put Brother Wiseman in this chair. That's why he left. Yeah. So just take those things off and we'll put this here. Oh, my handkerchief. Have to have it. There you go. So now here's what happens. How many of you have joined us on these prayers before? And Brother Hagen, he was in, you'll find this in the book, Plans, Purpose, and Pursuit. He's talking about a great move of God that's coming. And supernatural things are going to happen. And he said, things that happened only rarely will become commonplace. So it, it, it might be rarely in our thinking. I know of several instances where I've heard people that were speaking in tongues. I heard them in English. I have, I have had this happen in my own life. How many of you have ever heard somebody speaking in tongues, but you heard them in English. See, it happens. It happens. Yeah. And we know other stories of other people, you know. But this is, this is happening regularly. And I always say to the Lord, I always feel like it's his graciousness that lets us hear him one more time. And uh, I pray that it continues till Jesus comes. It will continue as long as the Lord wills. So uh, what happens is we're going to pray in tongues, and you're going to have to pray rather quietly. You're going to have to pray like a Hannah prayer, only her lips moved, but she prayed in the Messiah, so it was effective. And the people, of course, uh, who are there, you can pray wherever you are so loudly, but Max just needs to hear me, and uh, it will be the interpretation of what you're praying. So... That bless me, brother. I'm glad God kept kneeling you. He needs every part of it. He needed your part to work all that work to get us here tonight. He needed you to see that vision. He needed you to call us. He needed you to tell us and help us after we heard from the Lord. I think, God, did we not do it well enough? Did we not pray in an awakening? Oh, God. We have to have his help. I know he wants us to. I know he wants it. And so, Max just hears it, and he just writes. He, 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 cannot, tra he cannot translate Arabic into English as fast as he has to write it. He can't do it. It's all supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. God is supernatural. You know, we're not a social club. 
No. We, we believe in doing good works. My son, Terry, we have a street ministry. We have a church. We have all kinds of things like that. We love doing it. But the supernatural goes on down there. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're not a social club. We are a body of Christ. He is the head and we are the body. And he speaks to us. And one of the scriptures he gave me early on in this, and he gave it this week to us in our prayer call, Isaiah 28, 11. With stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. Yeah. And then he said, speaking about the Holy Ghost in John 14, 15, 16, the Holy Ghost will speak what he hears. He speaks. The Holy Ghost speaks. And the Bible says he will show you things to come. And when he talked to Max about this assignment, he said, I am revealing through all the saints in prayer, what is yet to come? Oh, we've heard some things. Oh, yeah. I don't know if Joseph is in here. Is Joseph in here? Where are you, Joseph? Here. 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 I hear your voice. Joseph, come up here, please. One day... We're sitting, we're, we're having our prayer, and Max reads this word, and uh, he can't pronounce it, and he spells it, Khorasan yeah. Afghan, and then he spells K-H-O-R-A-S-A-N. Uh, would you give, uh, give him, please? Now, this brother Joseph pastors a church near Washington, D.C., in Maryland. And um, he calls, no, you texted me. I did. Okay, yes. on Wednesday, we get this word, Khorasan. We never heard it. We look it up, and we find out it's a geographical area of Afghanistan, and that it takes in Pakistan, Afghanistan, and that ISIS calls himself now ISIS Khorasan. Mm -hmm. oh. And so we had gotten this, the Lord had given us in prayer. I get a text and what were you doing and what did you text to me? Sure. I was at dinner uh, with one of the elders of my church. We had just finished a, a church service. And um, he began to tell me um, that his wife had texted him. Now, where did he work? He works for um, the Department of Defense. I can't say where, but <laughs> um, if you know about that, you know. <laughs> you can't really say. But um, he works for the Department of Defense um, at a very high-level security job. And he was in a security briefing uh, during the time that you guys were having noontime prayer. So his wife texted him about this name that this they just mentioned, this word. And he said, it's funny that you are sharing this because I'm in a security briefing right now. And they're discussing this place right now. It's right Bad Wednesday, on our Right assignment, at the moment. Right at the same moment. We just have to get our, we have to broaden and widen and accept and not turn down the supernatural and God's working. You had an example of it right here with the brother from Egypt and, and uh, praise God. Mm -hmm. And then a little bit later, a few weeks later, we get this, the Lord tells us, he'll tell us scriptures to read and he told us Ezekiel 38, Ezekiel 39, that's a war that's upcoming. And he starts naming the people who are in that. And we'll be involved. And he gives us this funny word. And Max just spells it out. And do you have that word there? It, it doesn't matter. It's a funny spelling. It's, it's a funny, funny spelling. It's not anything we can pronounce. And uh, so my little Hannah, she's on the front row. Her eyes get big. And she had texted it. She had put it in her phone. And it came out, this is China. And this is what the Chinese call themselves. We call it China, but they call it this. So God's talking to us about an upcoming war, and he's talking about China being in it, but he doesn't call them China. He calls them this name. And he never calls Iran Iran. He calls it Persia. And so uh, it's so very supernatural. But I'm just telling you this because um, I want you to believe. Well, I, I, it, if you do anything outside faith, it's no good. 
church. And your faith doesn't work except in love. So you gave yourself on the altar. And now, wherever you're sitting, even if you're whispering your prayer, God is giving you that utterance. And you are saying, Jackie, what he says through you. And then he's going to give the interpretation later. Oh, Father, you're so marvelous and magnificent. Magnificent in your working. I thank you that you took this little Baptist girl and you filled her with the Holy Ghost. I thank you that the blood of Jesus cleansed me so I could become a temple of the Holy Ghost. And I'm here among the temple of God. We are the temple congregate today. We are the temple filled with the Spirit. And you can do things through us together that you can't do just when we're alone. Oh, Lord, we're asking you specific things. Father, I'm not telling you this because you don't know it. But you know there's a lot of darkness on our dear country. Oh, Father, we believe with all of our hearts that you have purpose for the United States of America, that you want the prayer lights to come on. And you want a great awakening, Father. And in the name of Jesus, if we have not prayed well enough for that great awakening, please anoint us to do it now. Please, Father, in the name above every name, give us an awakening to God. Give us an awakening to you. Holy One of Israel, blessed Lord, blessed Lord, blessed Lord. I'm asking you now for this marvelous way, this miracle of speaking to this people with stammering lips in another tongue, of speaking through the Holy Spirit and showing them things to come. Oh, God, thank you. Oh, Father, use these vessels that have dedicated themselves to you. Yes. Holy one of Israel, holy one of Israel, holy one of Israel. Oh, Frana Makale Tato, and just begin to pray quietly. Believando Lugu Brakata da Kahatan Terigo Jacte. Is it the Buafra no Nukobri Palo Tonya Nicalaba Papa? Is it the Nukobri Maladania Nicola Cofrate de Bacala Baconge? Is it the Bator Masata la Kahala Kalatino Nukoli Vatia? You all pray, be sure to pray. Surely Vadania, don't just observe, be sure to pray. Kufrani ni mikaso do do go baba kala kala danye ni koho la vapi. Ije nu nu nombri kafra nu kuli kefra tu shkata prangi kalo dobri kahanake. Oh le vato nu goshke. Jinjora makaya na kole behele bahaya na koho la ka bahaya na koho la ka bahaya. Gridanyo nu kobre vresko to do do dabre. Ije nu kombri kafra nu kalo go be hinyangolo kola hama. Yano kole gebe yanora, elivan yo hoshe le ban yo galababi lolo ban yo ne kora ne do do gomba apraniko 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 brovran dili bashko dora bangala gonda ba kere bado kalavito malagi don dilacia kahasan jeno koritala kavre dush katambre. I jena kala gali donje de kala vabali donje de kotafa. Si vroto bre makala kaya na kala kohombre kala kala tito kala varabada ne ne ha ha ya na kaya homba kaya na kohole kafane le kobra. I jura makaske jenyora va kala kala binyo na kala vitaro. Rondeli vasco donie mi calanda li calobra ni pohanie che le vaba lo la basciane manio no cobra cavara bacce o jande le bacco lo frattisco o shana va la barra bacala cala danie ne cola vabi shene barra bosche ne cola vaba la gora ma caia nana cora
Ele vala maca hala mãe, ele cora maca, ele cola gadania, ele cola gambabi. Rons canama, os tivam bora, mac cola gadinha no cobra. Cover but you to wajava baixo no voco. Haba cora maca, ele na cola caha, ele na cola caha. Handolo coca, marate, marande le cora baski, tolo gocete. Shono vaki. Shona vakala go brak to the gombra kele kola gan dan 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 dan. Oh, hola makai yana kala kavito de gombri kala kala baladin yana kobra. Meri vala bora makai yana kola kaha yana kola kala bala konye ni kala bapa. Ijanda la kapre, malakota de kapre, ijano no topre. Sofa papa, makalita. Gandhi le po, mahati. Shovamba. Shovamba le koro makaha. Nyone kalevito lo gobre de le kambara niko. Oh, hole mahara makahara makahara makahara. Lili donye ni kapra kalevito landi visko nonche. Shato lo gobre de lo kalakabra. Oh, balavinyo. Ma colia vito la bala quito la bala ma quito la bala mani. Colevata, pandeluta. Sembrò mica la dura ma chi io non cocco la pi. O c'è una vala parla ma che io non cocco bi la vandudi. Grandi le casco tora, masco da do doce. I shandolo govri balo d'oro, ma calla caffitto. A giunda, a giunda via, a giunda via no, che le abbrato, le ma calla cabidio, vando lo cosce di va. I shandolo mo core, ma calla calatito, malatito, ma un calacchito. Che le va alla macca, ma stio. Pipo bu wah, munga la bahai. Ya nak kumbano nak itu, mah kita lo gombe. Jivaronos kita ambra, kili vrondo lo kobrinya, eni vala goba, makuto lo gombe la sinda la nu. Ajini le gabra makila nonyo, galabra makor mahala vatito lo gombe le kabra kala kondiete. Shinako, shinako venda. Shina ko vinde bakora ma hala bandiene ne kala gabe e do gora maka lola banye lola banye lola banye lola banye asi da kora ma kaya na kala kaha e je de kola gava usuto makito o paskanye kolevatura ischante de kapaka la katinyo no kovrate se não copa aquilo, tonha nem cafra, moca lá pito, tudo chata, ele é gamba. Xonavati, xonavati, me alongue, ele é vabro, manda cobre calo, mocora, ma capra, e já não cola bitânio, não coli vapa. Estonha, estonha nia, macodonhe, macalito, calibopa, senhato, calivandora, nem nem cá. Cahalandido e nivato, malito. Com papá, mote capa ha ha ha, nie cola gobra. E já nem a cora de van, já não conta a caprete, ele conta para maqui. E já nem a cora bacala caladinho, não cola cavra batida de gotosque. E já ando, se é pronta fre. Oh, já não vê cala cala maia, não cola cavra malito, não gombre cala cavra maqui le tobre. I gine matto pa, shona kotapre, ma kalautito, gevaran dashke. No, it's a beria. Ma, pekondachia. Shinako. Mo la batito, do gombara gadavre bele komba. I jana koratito, kene kalakabrate, vrendeli muska. Sunyaka, sunyaka mia. Noni ni kabra, vrendeli kahadneke. I jana lo korapitio. Bandi de Kotashka, Mahano, Kandigaka, Masuta, Galivandora, Malikanchetto, Ajane, 
Not a cola bobby, no cola kabambi, na kalakada. No a papakaya, no cola kabadia, na kila to minya na. Isato. Isato mea. Isato mea finger. Ikala makarito. Donaba. Mo, ma, ma. Mama chita, mama chita, mama chita, mama chita. Shivro dombre bacaledino, no cola gavalama. E je ne cala cabrito, no cole belliando, no cole babito, ma co. E jandu, ma cala caro, ma cala vito. Sobatia, ma la condiete. Cole paca, lanti, ma to, na, i, la, o, ma, i, cagno, ta, ta, ki, ta. A la vita, la calamba. Shone kata, kiri balatora, me kala frandosh, ki na makala binyo, no kolo kavra. Kode balya toro makaya na kala kalabamba, e shene kala godovri makala kola be ole bachuta da bashki donja da kalabaki ito. Ki vala maki la na no ki la makoro makahala ba e chandoro kotishka. Oh, shana makahala makito lo gombre kala kadito. Malatito, malatito, malatito. Olevata la ma, la ma capra, cala cotobre, cala cotabre. Igine malatusca dobre, cala cotambre, mala combrete di cotabre. Iso do do, fanie ne cuculabi, na colo colo combali, vaccia. Sono macabri, tola combrete scope. Matito, matito fia. Bampa, bampa nia. O de basco dobre, cala combre, cala cabarata. Libra tuefe na cola macete. E si lima cuafra na cola cotofra patito, de goho la papaya na cola capia, na nonia bacaya. E si andò, ma ha ha, no cala babre. E si andò la cobrafra, e si andò cola becambra. Oh, la pito, la pito, la pito. Oh, frandi, camacchi, l'andoje. Ma sota, la macchito, la cotota, capala, con gene, cala, cafala, di cora, cabala, cadiene. Oh, cinevra, cose, brata, la compre. E le bacco, le camba, o cale bisco, e giando lo cofre, mi calo, mi calo, mi calo. Gro pagne, gro pagne mia. Go pranye mi a fronde. Ma kala gondi li vasko nora ma kaya na kala gandye ne kola ba. I frondo la gobre, ki li bala mome, i shano no kabre. I zubu shana kaka. Ende vru la ma kora ma kala dio no kobre ma kala kabre. I si di collavre delle combracchi di cosa ho detto con la capacara, ma con la cacaccia. Te di cata, te di cata ne hai, te di cata fondi, mo, a sapa, ma ha letto, candi di cabra, ma ti toto. I sangio la coho fra i tata da coho sciacta, i sangio ma con la cattifra, ma con la coccabra il tatio. E c'è una cosa che la vita lo coglie le bacche. E c'è una cosa che la vita lo coglie. Ma sti otto, ma sti otto ne ho. Pascotto un piccolo. E una cosa che è tato. O che è fatto? Che c'è una cosa che barra con donna e una cosa che fa. Ma che la combara, ma che c'è una cosa. Con le vecchie e con le vecchie. Malatito, malatito. Mangalito, mangalito, fondi alle capra, sciogne nel cuore, ma caia, a galavito lo cohupa. Seneca, Seneca fia, Seneca fia naco. Lord, we praise you. Oh, la vada, ma caia, na cola cambapa. E io non guto fri pasco d'ora. Che devo comprare capra, na chi, da capala tutte di cabrani, ne con le vettigna, a già non corre baia, niena, e a non me la baia, oh, rabattia, oh, rabattia, oh, rabattia, oh, rabattia, fronde. 
Molita mangile d'ora, maschi d'ania, no, colebre, nicolabri, mastogne, enia. La latura. La latura mia. La latura mia, fronde, chisca d'ondambra, calacaiana, colaviciato. Gianna macaiana, colavita, la gombre, calacandabra, calacandino. Pa prene, shona baha, nyana non ye, pala kalagane, nicola kalabapito, e jana korambe, e kalamania. Casina pora, nota cabra, nota cabra, nota cabra. She did a do scatapra, kita loca la campi, tangoti, from a calita, long alita, ocean of vati. Oh, hallelujah. Preti ne cala gombele vara sogne, ma con le digne non coho le vibara. Ma se non cala bito non cobra catata da coho se che ne catapra cala cacane ne con la patria. Oh, le vala bamba mani ne con la catibra poco le catambre. E già non cala. Son si ne cala bete ne catavrambe. Melitato, melitato, melitato. Con le vandabre, con le vandabre nea. Oh, palacaia, palacaia, palacaia. Oh, praise you, Father. Oh, hola macara, macala calatan. Soli maratoshke di bratoshka tambre, con le cafrito. Shine no nombre, calage vaba la cura, macahale me chofe le gabra cane, ni con le cababalito. I jena mora di squafra ma cora ma cahalaki. Cala gandiote di cala cafrete. I jena mo coa vrata. E ni ne cala. Son di lica. Son di lica. Praise you, Father. And oh, Father, as Brother Wiseman was so moved to ask you to thank you for the spirit of revelation. Father, thank you for revealing unto us. Thank you for revealing to our brother from Egypt that he needed to go and where he needed to go. Father, thank you for the revelation to each one of us, the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. Thank you for revealing to each person in this room and each person within the sound of my voice where they're to go and what they're to do and the path they're supposed to take every day. Every day, every day, souls are in the balance. Oh, hala makito, how many souls were in the balance for that gentleman, our brother, to go to, to Jordan. Oh, Father, praise you, praise you, praise you. We want to go where you want us to go. We want to say what you want us to say. We want to pray what you want us to pray. We want to we want to sit in the number one chair, and we want to be ruled by you. We want to be ruled by you in this meeting. Don't want it to be just cookie cutter something, but we want it to be led by the Spirit of God. We're thankful for everything you've revealed to us. I'm thankful you revealed Jesus to my soul. I thank you that I could accept Him, and I was born again as a little girl. And I'm thankful for you revealing the power and the truth of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for revealing my path along the way. And Father, you got us all into this room tonight. All of our paths led here. I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for the group that we've made up. Oh, thank you, Lord. I just praise you. Thank just Jesus. praise you. Just join me in praising him, please. Thank you. We just praise you, Lord. We just praise you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we praise you. Oh, we praise you. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you myself. I just praise you and thank you. I thank you and praise you. I thank you and praise you. I thank you and praise you. Never, never, never could I praise you enough or thank you enough. Oh, fra bacala tonia ne calabala tito. Let's pray in the spirit a bit. Oh, fra na macara. 
Vrotele, va la basso, che la baccaia non colle che le bicioni di capra. Oliva alla maola, mi ha dato, non comprate, le va a comprare, le conviesche. You should not dumbra. Thank you for the spirit of prayer. Thank you for the spirit of prayer. Thank you for pouring out upon us the spirit of prayer. Oh, halamaki to logambra on us in this meeting, but on the body, on the body of Christ, Lord. Thank you for pouring out the spirit of prayer on your body. Ishoni valabora manga. Thank you for the utterance. Thank you for the utterance. Thank you for the utterance. Oh, la baratanda. Thank you for Isaiah. 2811, thank you for speaking to us in other tongues. Oh, thank you for the Holy Ghost who reveals to us things to come and what he hears you say about us. How we do praise you, how we do praise you, how we do praise you, how we do praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise you, Father. Praise you. Praise you, praise you. Praise you. Brother Max, did the Lord speak to us tonight? Page and a half here. Thank you, Lord. Did he give us interpretation? Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. Actually, you, I stopped hearing you in the end very, mm-hmm. for a while. I don't know if you prayed over 15 minutes. I was just keep praying. Sometimes I hardly can stop praying, yeah. you know. But it did stop. So started with First Corinthians fourteen twenty eight. First Corinthians fourteen twenty eight. Fourteen twenty eight. Mm-hmm. My words, my words to you tonight, through my friend. My words to you tonight through my friend. Is it word singular or plural? Plural. My words. My words to you. To you tonight. Through my friend. I heard you. I heard you. Hmm. You are righteous or righteous. Proverbs fifteen twenty nine. Far from them, far from them. John sixteen thirty three. I am talking to you, church. Have peace. I am talking to you, church. Have peace. You are free. I set you free. You are free. I set you free. Romans 8. Verse 2. Let me know if I'm going too fast. Romans 8, verse 2. My word, and with a D, my word is active, living, and sharp. My word is active, living, and and sharp Hebrews 4:12 I am your Jesus I am your Jesus Romans 8:23 Romans 8:23 You are the first f- 
fruits, there's an S here. You are the first fruits. My word and my spirit over this nation. My word and my spirit over this nation. Ephesians 6, 17. Second Timothy two verse one. Hmm. My grace over you tonight. My grace over you tonight. John fourteen twenty three. Make, after John 14, 23, make your home and stay with me. Make your home and stay with me. Oh, there's an answer to that. Through, through your faith. Through your faith. Ephesians 3.17 And then now, just the word now. After now, listen to my prophet. Listen to my prophet. Judge nothing. Judge nothing. First Corinthians four verse five. And then after that the word increase I N C R E A S E D increased. Then Daniel or Daniel twelve verse four. I say to both nations, I am all in all. I say to both nations, I am all in all. Ephesians 4, 6. Thank you, Lord. My Father will W-I-L-L. -L. My father will. W-I-L-L? -L. Mm -hmm. John 6, verse 39. 39. John 6, Well, that's what you have to say. The number of the mark is coming.
Revelation 13, 16 to 18. Revelation 13, 16 to 18. So 16 to 18. I am your God. You waited for me. I am your God. Next line. You waited for me. Isaiah 25, verse 9. Isaiah 25, 9. Thank you, Lord. You will be saved. You will be saved. Saved or safe? Saved. E.D. Romans 10, 13. Romans 10, 13. After that, it will and shall. It will and shall be. And sh shall, there is no be. It will and shall. It will and shall. Yeah. It will and, and shall. shall. Yes. Okay. Oh, there's the next line. Come to pass. <laughs> Isaiah. Two, two. Isaiah two two. After that, be. Behold, yeah, it's behold. Behold, B E H O L D. Yeah, behold. After that, Joel three verse one. Joel three, what? One. One. But through me. But through me. Next line. Thank me. Thank you, Lord. Thank me. Thank you, Lord. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. He gave this one to us for. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Fifty seven. Trust in me. So that's what happened in the end. Okay. Trust in me. Then after that, declare my glory. Help us do that, Lord. First Chronicles 16.24. What was that now? Chronicles. First Chronicles. First Chronicles 1624. 24, yeah. 1624. Then trust in me. Trust in me. Write them down twice. Okay, let's go back over and see that we got it correct. And then we'll look up the scriptures as we go. Hallelujah. First Corinthians fourteen twenty eight. And my concordance comes up on the ESV. Okay. But if there is no one to interpret, let each of them keep silent in church and speak to himself and to God. Hmm. hmm. That's what we said earlier. But I think he's saying to us, we, we have an interpreter. My words to you tonight... Through my friend, I heard you. You are righteous. Proverbs fifteen twenty nine. The 
The Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are, he's made us righteous. Thank you, Lord. Oh, here the scripture, the Lord is far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of the righteous. And then the next statement is far from them. And then John 16, 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And the next statement, I am talking to you, church, have peace. And that's what the scripture said. I've said these things to you that in me you may have peace. I am talking to you, church, have peace. You are free. I set you free. Thank you, Lord. Romans 8, 2. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and Thank death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My word is active, living, and sharp. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Hallelujah. That's the ESV. Active, living, and sharp. My word is living, acting, and sharp. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I am your Jesus. Romans 8, 23. And not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Oh, next line. You are the first fruits. Thank you, Lord. You got it right again, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Wow! But, and not only the creation, but we ourselves who have the first fruits of the Spirit. You are the first fruits. My word and my spirit over this nation. Yes. Ephesians 6 17. Thank you, Lord. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit which is the word of God. Word and the Spirit. Mm. 2 Timothy 2.1 You then, my child, be strengthened by the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Next line. My grace over you tonight. Thank you, Lord. I'll take that. You, my child, be strengthened by the grace. He's strengthening us tonight. John 14, 23. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And my Father will love him. And we will come to him and make our home with him. Next statement. Make your home and stay me. with me. Thank you, Lord. Through your faith. <laughs> Ephesians three seventeen. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Now, listen to my prophet. 
judge nothing. 1 Corinthians 4, 5. Therefore, do not pronounce judgment before the time, before the Lord comes, mm -hmm. who will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Then each one will receive his commendation from God. Hallelujah. Increase. Daniel 2.2. 2. No, 12.12. 12. Daniel 12. 12.4. 12 4. 12 what? 12 what? 12-4. 12-4? Oh, I made a mistake there. That's probably my accent, too. Uh, <laughs> Daniel 12-4? Yes. But you, Daniel, shut up the books and s shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. Mm. We're in that time. I say to both nations, nations, and when he says that, it usually means United States and Israel. Yeah. I say to both nations, I am all in all, Amen. Ephesians 4, 6. One God and one Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My Father will, John 6, 39. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The number of the mark is coming. You know, sometimes we pray over into another time. Sometimes our prayers go over into the tribulation time, though we won't be here. Uh, Revelation 13, 16 through 18. Also, it causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. That is the name of the beast or the number of its name. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding calculate the number of the beast for it is the number of a man and his number is 666. Hmm. So we prayed about that tonight. I am your God. You waited for me. Isaiah 25, 9. Aye. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him. Hallelujah. That he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hallelujah. 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 Ha ha, I loved it. You will be saved, Romans 10, 13. Mm -hmm. But these things are close. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Hallelujah. It will and shall come to pass. Isaiah 2, 2. Now this is over into the millennium. It shall come to pass in the end of days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. That's the mountain of the Lord's house, Moriah, Mount Moriah. That's Jerusalem. It shall come to pass. These things we're praying in the future. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You know that time uh, when they were praying in tongues and they heard them all in their own language? It says they were speaking the wonderful works of God. They weren't speaking about parting the Red Sea. They were speaking about what was about to happen in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he's told us, I'm showing you things to come. 
and we prayed about it. We prayed about the establishment of the uh, of, of Jerusalem as the as the capital of the whole earth. Behold, Joel three one. For behold, in those days and at that time when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem. See. Thank you, Lord. Behold, through me, but through me, thank me. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust in me. Hallelujah. Declare my glory. 1 Chronicles 16, 24. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. Trust in me. Trust in me. Trust in me. Bottom line, trust in me. Hallelujah. He told us the other day, he's been telling us some things to say. And he told us the other day. This morning, you mean? Uh, what he told us the other day, the first one he told us was, just say, I trust you, Lord. And then this morning he told us, just say, Jesus is my helper. So I've been saying to Lord, yeah. I trust you, Lord. Jesus is my helper. And that's what will happen this week. He's our helper, and he's going to help us pray for this United States of America. I believe that's the focus of our prayers this very week. Do you have anything else you want to say? No, I was going to say the line is just listen and say Jesus is my help. Yeah, the line came this morning. Just listen and say Jesus is my helper. My helper. Right? Right. Jesus is my helper. So let's all say that. Jesus is my helper. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. And so that's how we're going to go. And we're Sister going to... Billy. Yes, brother. I want to share something. Yes. When you were talking about us praying over into another yes. time period. Yeah. When we were praying here and just before uh, we stopped praying and you started searching the scriptures there, when we were praying, I saw the most huge eagle nest. It was, it was beyond a natural eagle's nest. But it was huge. It was vast. It covered a tremendous area. I wouldn't even know how to estimate the size of this eagle's nest when we were here praying. And I thought, there's no eagle in it. Hmm? And I was looking at that eagle's nest, and it was woven with some of the finest thread that you could ever see. But yet, when I saw it, I knew it was an eagle's nest. It wasn't occupied. And when we were praying here, I just questioned well, where is the eagle? And I heard a voice come back and say, she's in flight. And that's why we were praying. Liz, there is one spirit to combat this spirit that's loose in the land now, and it's the spirit of the eagle, which represents prophet, which represents the seer, and in our praying, we're praying in another time, seeing in another time, and the spirit, this spirit of the eagle that God has promised to bring back into the church, and it's here now, that eagle spirit is the spirit that's going to combat these powers of the enemy that's been let loose upon the land, 
Yes. And we are of that eagle spirit. We are of that, that prophet move. When I say prophet here, I'm not talking about a single person. But I'm talking about that spirit of Elijah mm. right. that God has promised that he would restore yes. before a lot of these things that, the that yes, and before a lot of things that the Antichrist yes. even raises it. The Lord said, before that great and dreadful day, I will send you the spirit of Elijah back into the mist. That eagle is a seer. And God... Oh, he sees, he sees, yeah. Yes, he sees out there even what's coming. Surely. Yes. And it's being... Re we are that people. We are that. that. It's yes. being we are that time yes, with are. Elijah. Yes, we it, it, we're that number. We are that people. We're making up that body right now. When we pray, things happen. Yes. When we pray, things transpire in the heavenlies. Amen. When we pray, not only does God hear us, but the powers of darkness hears Amen. our praying. Amen. It's not only that God hears us, but it's the spirit of hell. It's the spirit, I describe it this way, the scepter tanks of hell have been unleashed in the land. But guess what? There is a rain falling out of the heaven. Oh. Light. What does light do? It reveals, but light exposes. That's what he said. How many times in our praying has the Spirit moved upon us and we would start praying, expose, expose. Ex right. Now that God's exposing it, don't get scared. That's it. Now that it's being exposed, yes. it's not time yes. to be afraid, but it's time to start rejoicing right. because right. God is answering yes. our prayers. Yes, He's answering Ooh. our prayers. Yes. You know, Sister, but I haven't really shared this testimony, but, and I don't even think you know this, but it's been, a, well, some time back, this thing showed up on the side of my head, and it kept growing and growing. Looked like a huge raspberry. And uh, I'd get my hair cut, they'd cut it. I'd comb my hair, I would cause it to bleed. If I hit the cell phone up too close to my head, it would start bleeding again. And uh, I thought, I was binding, I was loosening, I was praying, and it kept bleeding. <laughs> and so I thought I've got to get something done about, about this. So I went and had it checked. And after about a week later, they called me back. They said, Mr. Wiseman, unfortunately, we hate to tell you this, but this is cancer. And I said, well, what do we do? They said, you've got two options. One option is we can do the treatment or the other one, the surgery. I said, which one is the quickest? They said, the surgery. I said, how soon can we get this done? So they set up an appointment and I, I didn't tell Lorraine, I didn't tell any of the kids, but I did call a Briska and I told her, I said, listen, I've got some appointments that I've got to meet such and such a day. How about coming up, getting your mom, y'all going out and spending the day someplace? So they went out. So I head out to my appointment to have this thing removed. So I'm inside the, I, I had, sent Brother Copeland a text about praying. And uh, he answered the text. And he said, Gene, what am I praying for? And, but I, uh, so then I thought, man, I hate to tell him it's cancer. And uh, when they first told me 
that it was cancer. I felt that spirit of fear. I mean, I felt it. But I immediately went to what Brother Copeland texted me back. He said, what am I praying for? Before I could answer his text, I got another one from him. He said, wait, I just heard the voice of the Lord. This thing has been taken care of a long time ago. <laughs> you just receive it and enter into the rest. When they told me it was cancer, fear showed up. But do you know what? It couldn't stay because I chose the rest. When we pray, not only does God hear us, but the mountain hears us. <laughs> when we pray, the darkness, dar there are works of darkness. What is that? Darkness itself is producing a work right now. But guess what we're producing? We're producing something that is expelling that darkness. Amen. <laughs> Sister Billy, I'm sitting in the chair there and they're scraping. I can hear the scraping down inside. It sounds like they're scraping bone. I don't know. And they're scraping it so hard they're pulling my head. It's come like this back around. And after a little bit, I hear them say again, Mr. Wiseman, unfortunately, I thought, man, this is not the place for fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, and we hate to tell you, but this thing is in there a lot deeper than what we thought. I said, well, what do we do? They said, all we can do is go deeper. I said, well, hurry up and get it done so I can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so they go deeper in the midst. I'm only saying this because, listen, God hears us, but so, have you ever read in there all those miracles of the four Gospels? How many of those miracles did Jesus pray for? <laughs> How many prayer lines did he have? <laughs> I mean, a lot of times the, it was just simply speaking the word. Yeah. How many believes the spirit of the eagle? Come on and say it. That is a spoken word. Oh, go ahead and declare it. I declare light in the midst of all this darkness. I'm, I'm sitting there, and then suddenly, someone, and I've entered into this rest. I'm laying there having camp meeting all at the same time. I'm here, unfortunate, unfortunate. And after a little bit, I heard, heard someone say, well, it's gone. They said, yes, God. And I'm sitting there. I showed no response whatsoever. And after a little bit, they said, did you hear what we said? I said, what? They said, it's gone. I said, oh, were y'all talking to me? <laughs> they said, yes, it's just gone. <laughs> I didn't ask because either way, I knew all they could get was the mass. It would take God to get the spirit of that thing. Amen. I didn't ask whether it just vanished or whether what, they just said it was gone. That was good enough for me. <laughs> and oh, yeah. then they start working, slow me back up, and I'm sitting there going. And one of them said, I guess your face is feeling kind of tight. I said, actually, I feel like I'm getting a facelift. <laughs> One of the doctors said, well, really, you are. He said, but if you want the other side done, let's do it under different circumstances. <laughs> but it's not only, listen, when you pray, remember, it's not only God that's hearing you, but the powers of hell are hearing you. The power, I, I, that nest was vast. While we were praying, it was huge. And I sat here and I thought, well, where is the eagle? So help me, I heard the voice come back and said, she's in flight. While we are praying, we are eagles in flight. Oh, 
For we are declaring, thus saith the Lord, we are eagles in flight. Come on and say it. I'm not being weary and well-doing. I'm, I'm mounting up with well wings as an eagle. I refuse to let the devil wear me out. Amen. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo. Praise oh, God. Hallelujah. Glory. Thank you, Father. Holy. You know, the eagle is a symbol of this country. Yes. Oh. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you. And I just, I remember when, when the Lord told us, this is the generation. He told us this, we're the this last is generation. This the generation going to see everything. Now, generation, every living soul. It's not going by 10 years or 50 years or 20 years. Every living soul. He said we'd see it all. We'll see it all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and we'll work with him. And remember, when you speak, when we pray, we have wireless connection with the Lord. I mean, he can hear us, how people prayed all these years. If you drop your cell phone, you feel like in, 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 the, in the middle of nowhere, like you can't get hold of anybody. But God still hears us. The Holy Spirit is working. And he spoke to us tonight. Thank you, Lord. Right. Let's praise him. He said, thank you. We 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 thank you. Now, you're going to see you, Jesus. and hear and know. This that you heard tonight is so. These things will increase. I said that word. Increase. Increase. The moving in the realm of the spirit. The moving in the realm of flight. The root moving in the realm of prayer, translation. This night will be far surpassed in what you will see. Don't back up. Come on home with me. Hallelujah. I spoke to you tonight of my home. It's in me. Make your home in me. Make your home in me. In me. In me. Make your home in me, and you will see what I see. And you will hear as I hear. And you will know as I know. And you will be my body ere you go. You will operate and move at my command. And you will hear words that I say, and it will not be fuzzy, foggy. Clearly it will be. Clearly you will hear from me. You gave yourselves to me tonight, and that was good, and that was right. Keep walking in that holy way. Keep walking in that holy way, and you'll hear what I'll say. If I'll tell you to go to Jordan, you'll go. If I tell you to go to St. Louis, you'll go. If I tell you to go in the backyard, you'll go. But you will be hearing specific instructions from me. And they will be clear. Now you marvel and say, oh my. They heard an audible voice. But you'll hear. It's your choice. It's your choice to hear. To hear and obey. And the voice of my spirit within you will say, this is the way, walk ye in it. And you'll walk in that way. Things will increase. Oh, my. They will increase exponentially. Moving in the spirit realm will increase exponentially. And you'll see a great difference from the first day of this meeting until the last. Mm -hmm. I brought you here, and I'll use you. Keep your heart clear. Hallelujah. Bless Hallelujah. the Lord. Thank Bless you. the Lord. You know, he wants us to go home tonight in an awesome way. He wants us to go home tonight having uh, sat with him and keeping this upon us. And so you are dismissed. We'll just sing our one little song. 
We'll give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his love and tell of his love. We'll give all the glory to Jesus and tell of his wonderful love. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. The blessing of the Lord upon you.